Hello students, uh, today we are going to continue with the third book of uh, Metamorphosis. So in the previous book, which was obviously not a part of your syllabus, but uh, I had summarized to tell you the story so that we could find a connection between book 2 and book 3 and what finally is happening uh, in book 3 is a result of what had happened in book 2, right? So in book 3, we will start with the story of Cadmus, but in book 2 itself, we had seen that uh, how we come or how we arrive to this part of the story. So in the previous story, we had seen that uh, Jupiter comes in the disguise of uh, bull and abducts uh, Europa. Europa is daughter of Agenor and sister of Cadmus. And finally, when she is abducted, like uh, and Agenor is all like in anguish and worried. Like where exactly her daughter, his daughter has gone, and then he gives an order to uh, Cadmus to go and find his sister. Now, finally, in this book, we see that uh, when Jupiter arrives at Crete, still he is carrying Europa, and after that, he abandons the shape of bull. I mean, he had disguised himself as a bull and abducted Europa, but finally, after arriving at Crete, he like come, uh, come uh, like comes back to his original shape. Now, at the same time, uh, King Agnor is too anguished, uh, like who sees that his daughter is not in the palace, and he is uh, carried off by some uh, somebody because he is able to see only a bull, or he finds a trace of bull only, and uh, people who have seen uh, the bull carrying or Europa being carried say that she was carried by a uh, bull. Now, he sends uh, Cadmus, uh, who is uh, his son, to bring back Europa. Now Cadmus venters over the entire world because this is an order of her, uh, his father that he has to bring back his sister otherwise he should not come back. So he knows that it's not easy to find the trace of his sister without any help. But still he continues the search and goes on like looking for his uh, sister almost everywhere in the world. But doesn't see any sign of uh, like his missing sister. Eventually realizing that his search is going to be futile because it's not easy to find the sister or his sister Europa because she is not abducted by any ordinary man but a immortal that to Jupiter. So, but he is not, Cadmus is not aware that who has abducted his daughter, but he is. It was not easy to find the trace of the uh, his uh, find the trace of his sister, that is Europa. Now, but knowing that he can't go home because it is an order of uh, it is an order of the king or his father that he should not come back without the sister. He asked the oracle of Apollo what he should do. As we know in mythology, like the heroes used to believe a lot in the oracles. So finally, here in uh, the story of Cadmus also, we find that he goes to the oracle to like uh, ask for his future plans or what he should do for the future. Now the oracle tells Cadmus to keep an eye out for a heifer. So there is a hint which is being given by the oracle and he says that he has to keep an eye on the cow. So he says that he should look for a cow which has never been uh, used by any human being or like the cow which has never been touched by any human being for plowing the field or like for any sort of human service. So he says that uh, Cadmus, the oracle says that he, uh, Cadmus has to follow this cow and then look for the place where finally the cow settles. And he has to settle down in that particular place where the cow settles and start his race in that particular place or establish himself in that place. Now. Uh, here, I mean, uh, he is like instructed to call the reason Boeotia or Boeotia, right? So this name Boeotia has uh, like uh, is an actual place in Greece, and it sounds like the word for cows, which is boos. This word is related to the English word bovin, right? Now, when Cadmus leaves the shrine, sure enough that he is going to find that uh, cow or heifer, uh, he sees a matching cow. And finally, when he arrives or he comes out of that shrine, he actually finds that cow or cow, which is according to the in accordance to the description of the uh, oracle. And then he starts following the cow because he had been instructed to follow that cow. Now he goes on like he starts following the cow. He follows the heifers, and after some time, it starts billowing and lies down in the grass. So as had been like predicted or as had been like uh, forecasted by the oracle, that he has to look for settlement in the place where the cow sits down or like settles down. Now he understands that this is the place where he has, he has to establish himself. Cadmus understands that this is the place where he has to establish, uh, establish himself. Now Cadmus knows this is the spot and at this point the appropriate, th uh, appropriate thing is to uh, offer prayer to Jupiter. 
because whenever uh, something uh, pious is being done or something holy is being done, we just uh, for a prayer to the God. So the ritual starts with sprinkling of the holy water. So he also requires holy water and he orders his men that he, they, have, they should go and bring fresh water from the spring so that he could start his prayer or he could offer the prayer to the Jupiter and establish or like settle down in that particular place which has been found or which has been indicated by the cow, Hafer. Now, uh, obviously, according, uh, accordingly, he sends his men to like uh, bring the fresh water from the forest. But unfortunately, there is a cave in which there is a spring. But the men, uh, the Cadmus's men, are not aware of the things which is inside it, or what is exact, what exactly is waiting for them inside the cave. Now, when they go inside the cave, they find a giant snake. It's a, a huge snake, which obviously uh, Ovid has described as dragon. And it has got like a body which is covered with gold or it has got the skin or like a shield of the gold which is not easily penetrable. So anything like if somebody wants to kill it, it's not easy to kill that snake because it is covered with the gild of the or the cover of the gold, right? So that huge snake like comes out of that, um, um, that spring which was coiling, I mean that giant snake was coiling inside the spring and uh, when uh, comrades of Cadmus go to like fetch water from that spring, he comes out of that spring. Now, they are not able to fight it back because it is not an ordinary snake, uh, snake but it belongs to the god uh, Mars, right? So, it is not an ordinary snake. So, finally, he kills all of the Cadmus's men. So, by the noon, obviously, like Cadmus is still waiting for the men to come back, uh, bringing the water so that he could uh, start or perform the prayer. But they don't come back. It is almost mid-noon but they haven't come back or the corporates of God, Cadmus have not come back. So he's like anxious and worried that where exactly the men have gone. So finally he decides to look for the men and see for himself that what exactly has happened to them. So finally Cadmus is wondering where the men went and finally he goes in search of them. When he gets to the cave, there is a grisly or gruesome scene uh, which he confronts and he finds that all of his men are killed and they are, the bodies are lying in the cave. Now, Cadmus finally sees the snake or that giant snake dragon which is inside the cave and he knows that it has been, I mean, uh, it has killed all his comrades or his friends. Now, he feels that uh, he cannot, uh, looking at the giant snake obviously, he feels that he cannot fight it back. So, he says that obviously if I can't kill it or I can't take it away, then obviously I'm going to sacrifice my life for the, um, my life for my friends as well because they have uh, died in my service because they had been sent by me and they had come for my work or my purpose. So obviously if I can't bring them back to life, so at least I can sacrifice my life for my friends. Saying this, he starts fighting uh, the, uh, there is a battle between the snake and, and Cadmus. He starts fighting the snake but it is not easy task to kill that giant snake because it is covered with the shield of the, uh, the covering of the gold and his peers fail to penetrate his skin. Then finally he like uh, targets his nose, uh, the snake's nose, because it is the soft part from or uh, through which uh, he can pierce his uh, uh, spear. So uh, he hits the nose of the uh, uh, snake and then pins him against the oak tree. So finally it is killed by Cadmus, but it was not an easy task because even after dying it was coiling, it was, it was writhing in pain and it was coiling against the forest and it was not a um, easy sight for Cadmus as well because he had to like take in, uh, it, uh, uh, take it in very like uh, with difficulty that he had finally killed that snake because it was not the easy task even for Cadmus though he was hero. Now while Cadmus is staring at the snake there is a uh, sudden voice which starts speaking to Cadmus but Cadmus is not aware from where that sound is coming. Now here the voice says that what do you think? you are st staring at. Don't you know that you will be a snake too one day. So this is the prophecy or this is the sound, or like a sound which is coming out from somewhere and this is a sort of announcement, uh, announcement which is made to Cadmus that one day he too has to be snake. Then finally he is able to see goddess Minerva which is obviously the patron goddess Pallas of uh, Cadmus. She appears in front of uh, him Cadmus. And then she tells him to plough the ground and plant the snake's teeth in the furrows. Finally, along with this announcement, she also asks Cadmus to plant the teeth of the, uh, the, teeth of the uh, snake so that he could start his own race in that particular place. 
So he, like Cadmus does as he is commanded by the goddess and he starts plucking the teeth of the snake and uh, planting them in the ground. So as soon as all the teeth are planted, they are right, they are I mean, uh, from that ground, the soldiers start rising, I mean the human beings start growing from that ground. Now this is the race which, uh, which germinates from the uh, teeth of the snake and they all uh, like become warriors. So as soon as they come out of the ground, they are start fighting with each other. The reason for this fight is unknown to Cadmus and he is not aware that why they are fighting with each other. And they, they, uh, they continue to fight or they continue to kill each other. Finally, only five of them are left. So then Goddess Minerva says that you have to start your race with these five men who are left. Or these five warriors who are left, these are going to continue your race. So this is the story of Canvas. So after this we are going to uh, start the story of Academy. That's it. Thank you all.